We honor him today. Thank God for our pastors, Pastors Claude Regina Harris. Man, our campus leaders here at West, Elder Danielle Harris, Elder Donald Walker. Each of you in the room, can we thank God also for our E-Church that's watching us? Man, E-Church is watching us, and God definitely has a word for us on today. Amen. Just got a song I want to sing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Let me say it again. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. That's the word of the Lord. And we say amen. 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 Oh. Amen. 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 Can you just say that with me? Amen. Amen. Uh, type it in the comments, E Church. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yay. I love this part right here. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and their children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, in your going, in your weeping and rejoicing. He is with you. He is with you. He is with you. He is with you. Let me remind you. He is with you. He is with you. Yes, he is. And we're going to seal it with an amen. Everyone just say, amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. It is so, it is so high. Amen. Just one more time. We're going to get into this word. Amen. It is so. And so it is. Hallelujah. Let's thank God for being with us. He is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. Take your seats if you can. Hallelujah. That's the blessing over your life. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations. Your family and your children and their children and their children. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to get into this word. I am looking forward to um, patronizing the nest. I didn't even eat breakfast this morning. I said, Lord, I'm waiting. 
I'm waiting on what they have for us today, just like I'm waiting for your word to come forward. Amen. So we're excited about that. We're going to burn this mortgage. Yes. Yes. I just thank God. I was just I was just caught up in the moment. Every time I think about seven days or eight, I always think about the time when I could not I could not hold down any food. And so I'm, <laughs> that's where my mind went to first. But I thank God that God did move on my behalf. I, I was looking at paying uh, thousands of dollars to federal. You know, but it was crazy because I, I made a lot more last year. And I thank God for that. And so now I know some things I need to do. I need to get to writing off some things. I need to do. <laughs> but God made a way and blessed me this week. And that thing came on down. And it... He did it within seven days. I thank God for that. I thank God for that. Man, thank God for that. God is good. Now, let me tell you about this message. I, I have a problem with putting titles on my messages. I'll admit it. Confession. Full disclosure. I have an issue with naming my sermons. Elder Walker always asks me, what's the title today? And I usually tell him, it's between... So today is between, uh, I'm going to settle on, on a topic, though, so for our media ministry. Uh, let's go with the Kingdom Franchise. The Kingdom Franchise. I was going to use Rep the Kingdom, Rep the Franchise, what's inside of you, and I'm going to explain why. I got this message simply from driving by a permanently closed restaurant. It was a permanently closed restaurant restaurant and I was looking at this and I said to myself that restaurant still looks like when it was open because of the building itself because there were other restaurants it's a franchise there are other restaurants located in the city with the same building style now today this building style is oh it's outdated all the other wife savers look completely different this is a wife saver but I recognize it as a wife saver. Why? Because I had been there before, many years before, when I used to go to school near this wife saver. And so I thought about us. A lot of us, we look recognizable. We look like we might have, you know, something going on on the inside. And then when people approach us, it's nothing in, it's nothing in there. It's closed. We're guarded. We're going we're gonna to preach in a moment. So the Kingdom franchise, that's my my title. So many things came to mind. I want you to go to John 4. We're going to look at the 14th verse, and then we're going to skip to the 31st verse. We're going to read it out of the NLT. John 4, 14, and it reads, But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Verse 31, meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. <laughs> they thought to themselves, did somebody bring him food while we were gone? Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. Jesus said, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Now, you may ask, how does that particular scripture reading have to, what's it got to do with a closed down restaurant? I'm glad you asked. I looked at the restaurant, even though there was no longer a sign to say what this restaurant was, I still knew it used to be a wife saver. Uh, because it's a franchise. It's part of a franchise. And when you're talking about franchise, it began in one place, one single building. But as it began to expand, they put other buildings just like it in other places so that it will be easily recognizable. It's uniform. It's, it's a team effort. It's franchise. Make them all look the same so they can be recognizable. When I was a kid, I don't remember this, but my parents told me when I would see those arches, one years old, two years old, three years old, I would go, Arches! Arches! And Arches meant, you know, stop and get me a Happy Meal, please. I know that, I know we can get burgers and fries, and Ronald and them are there, Hamburglar, all of them are there, Grimace, 
Let, I want to go see my friends. Maybe play on the play place. But it's arches. I know those. I know those. And they said that sometimes they couldn't even see them. And they were like, how is he seeing these arches? It's a franchise. That's their, that's their mark. That's their logo. Their buildings look the same. They start uh, renovating them. And, and you'll see other new ones pop up in, in some of the old places. There because they have a standard to uphold. They want you to know that when you pass by this, yes, this place right here, you can get a good burger from here, or you can get chicken from here, or you can get seafood from this place. They have, they have branded themselves in such a way. So whatever you need, you see the name, you automatically can envision the menu, the product listing. You know what this place has to offer, right? I'm preaching already. So I looked at this old white saver and said, if I wanted some chicken, Broccoli casserole, fries, biscuits, and a half and half sweet and unsweet tea, I could not get it from this building. Because even though it looks like a wife saver, even though it still has like the color of the wife saver, and the sign is, is slightly fading, but I can't get in there. They don't even have the equipment anymore inside to make what it is that I was familiar getting from this place. So in my sermon today, the kingdom of God is the headquarters of the franchise, right? And we are to represent that franchise everywhere we go. What you get at the headquarters location, people should be able to get from you. We are the restaurants. Paul and Timothy, they wrote to the church at Corinth, and they said this in 2 Corinthians 3, 2 and 3. The only letter of recommendation we need is yourselves. Your lives are a letter written. Everyone can read it and recognize our good works among you. Clearly, you are a letter from Christ showing, that our, showing what we've done in our ministry among you. This letter written is not written in pen and ink, but it's on actual hearts of men. Not carved on tablets of stone, but on hearts of men. So back to this wife savers. It looks like the old wife saver. And at one time, I remember ordering food from this wife saver. What happened? You think maybe somebody might be feeling that way about another person? Someone that was so on fire for God. They were so on fire. They, they were a source of good advice and wisdom. And, 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 and they still are showing up to church, putting on the clothes. They clap their hands when it's time. They say hallelujah when it's time. I even might see them run around the church. But, but, but after they leave the building, I try to have a conversation with them and it's not, it's not lining up. It's not. A, it's almost as if they're empty. I, I, I can't get anything. I used to be able to order from this building. There was certain things. There, there was a camaraderie. There was a fellowship. This message is so multifaceted because the enemy would like to play on us and, and tear down relationships. The enemy like, would like to play on us and, and, and make us doubt the power of the Lord. And so we still come out of a religious uh, place. We still show up, put on clothes and go, but we're not seeking anymore. We're not, we're, we don't have the hope because, because that is what we are. Our foundation is the hope the, the, the hymn writer said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus name. So what happened? Do you know anybody who has the look? Do you know anybody who has a look? But when you go to sup with them, there's nothing. You expected something and you're not, you're not getting that. Are you looking the part, looking as if you have a testimony to share? Looking as if you have wisdom and when someone approaches you in need of the Jesus that you are seemingly to display, they don't get Jesus from you. See, this is a crucial time that we're in as a ministry because You've heard about the steel. You've seen the steel. And we're going to have a much 
bigger and better sanctuary. It's going to be updated. There's going to be so many great things about it. And let me tell you something. You know, living here in Augusta, anytime a new restaurant or a new place you can shop and anything like that pops up, people go. There's lines. It's crazy. I remember there's a place. What's that chicken place? It's off of Washington Road um, in Evans. Um, Slim Chickens. Man, I remember when Slim Chickens opened. And I said to myself, I want to try Slim Chickens. Anybody who knows me, you know I love chicken, okay? You know I love chicken. This, people should know this. You should know this. Let me tell you something. At my, at my appreciation this year, if you, if you went to the store and bought, like, one of them rotisserie chickens, and it was still hot, like, when you... Listen, I would give God a praise. <laughs> I would. I would. I would. Yeah. Listen, I love chicken that much. And so I said, I'm going to try Slim Chickens. And, I mean, I was so discouraged when I pulled up, wrapped around, line wrapped around the building, and it stayed like that for such a long time. Now, people do churches the same way. Now, the thing about it, though, when you, when you, when you come into that new church, and I'm not talking to you in these seats. I'm talking to somebody who's going to watch this replay. When you come into that new building, you are going to come in contact with a people, with a people that are mature, with a people that when you see them in the building, they're the same outside the building. Whatever you felt you received in the word that day, in the worship that day, when you come to visit New Life, if you encounter anybody who is a member of New Life, you're going to feel that same thing because we understand the importance of repping the kingdom franchise. What, what you got with Jesus, Jesus told that Samaritan woman, the water I give, you'll never thirst again. So we got, we, got, we got living water on the menu. And then he told the disciples, I got a kind of food you know nothing about. We got that on the menu too. And so if you encounter any one of us, you can get that water that'll make you never thirst again, and you can get the kind of food other people don't know about. And that food and that water sustains, and it keeps us, and it has people wondering how you made it. But we know it was the blood of Jesus that kept us, and we are to be like Jesus. How about this? How about this? How about you pulled up to a Longhorn, and you know what Longhorn is for, right? Some of you who may like steaks and other things like that, but when you walk in the door, it's Chuck E. Cheese. How would you feel? How would you feel? You pull up to a Longhorn and you walk in and it's Chuck E. Cheese. And you know what the E stands for in Chuck E. Cheese? I don't know if you all know that. It, entertainment. Charles Entertainment Cheese. That's his name. And so I don't, I don't want to go into a place where I'm just entertained. Because I, can, I, can, I don't want to come to church and just be entertained. I can go to uh, um, Six Flags, and I can go to Vegas and go see the Blue Man Group if I want to be entertained. I can go catch Celine Dion's show in, in Vegas. She's got a residency. I can go check, check her out if I want to be entertained. I can cut on my TV, and I can stream a movie. I can stream a TV sitcom if I want to be entertained. But I don't come to church for that. The reason why I put on clothes, even in times when I'm not feeling the best, I might be aching in my body. I'm still coming to play drums. Why? Because I come to this place. It has value to me. It enriches me. It gives me instructions for the week. I don't just come to put on clothes to see what everyone else has on. I come in here meaning business. I'm on assignment. This is where I get updated information. From time to time, the franchise changes things. They get new menu items. There are different things. And you need to be in the meetings to know what's new. There's some new things happening. You need to be in the room, you need, or at least on the E-Church, watching so you can see. And sometimes we cut the E-Church off. I don't know if y'all ever watched uh, the, the, the Sheard's show on BET. There was a time when Bishop Sheard, he had, he had to kind of get it, get at his son, Jay Drew. Jay Drew was cutting up. Jay Drew had talked to them, disrespectful. And, and, and Bishop said, who you think you talking to? And he told the BET crew, cut them cameras off. <laughs> And I don't know what Bishop said to J. Drew. Why? I wasn't in the room. So there's sometimes even each church, you need to come, come from behind the computer. If you're local, come on in the room because there's some things said after the stream stops. There's some things said before the stream begins. There's some things said during offering time. And Jonathan then may switch to a whole nother thing because you got to be in the room to hear it. My good brother AJ, he works with Chick-fil-A. 
He's an operator. He tells me sometimes, we're going to have this new thing next week. Might want to get it. We bring him back to the smokehouse, barbecue thing. And sometimes things are regional. Sometimes there are things that are regional in franchises. And, 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 and I understand that regional because there's some people who drive to New Life Ministries from Louisville. And see, there's some things you can't get in Louisville. And so she realized, I can't get them in Louisville. I, I got to drive an hour or more to Hepzibah because I found a place. I found a place. Oh, I was sad the other day. We were, we were talking about a restaurant that we were, would go to sometime in Wren's, the Dutch house. The Dutch house, I looked it up on Google. It says, it says permanently closed. That's a good, depending on where you are, it's a good hour drive, maybe 45 minute drive, but it's worth the drive. It's worth the drive. And Mother, Mother Walker found a place in Hepzibah, even though she's living in Lewis and she's up in age, and she says, I'll still make the drive because I found a place that challenges me. I found a place that when I went in there, they were not only open, but they were, they treated me like family, even though I don't even live in the same vicinity as the building. They treated me like family. I, I, I get a word from the Lord that keeps me uh, from this time to the next time. And not only that, because it's not a selfish experience. I get a word to enrich people back in, Louis, in Louisville. I get a word to enrich my family who may not be coming to church with me and hearing. I can repeat what I've heard. I take good notes. I, I, I support my media ministry and I, I get the, uh, what is it, thumb drives. And it's got all those multiple messages on it. And I can just be a blessing to someone else. So see, that's when I find a good place, my friends will tell you. I tell them about it. We have a group text. I, one thing I know about everybody in my group text. We know how to eat. Oh, Jesus. We know how to eat. Huh. I'm talking about we know how. I wish he was here. Brother Sean Jones, let me tell you something. Brother, I told brother, I told Sean, I said, I think you're a songwriter on the low, man. Because the way you put these words together, he, we were on our way to Spartanburg Sunday, and he he just, he told us something about, well, someplace, Bojangles, this, listen, ain't no, nobody's paying me. Wife Saver not paying me today. Bojangles not paying me. McDonald's not paying me. Uh, I would like for them to consider endorsing me. I've said your name so much in this message. Thank you. But we were on our way somewhere, and he was talking about something he orders. And the way he put it together, I don't even like jelly or jam on my biscuits, but he made me want to try it. The way he, the way he put it together, my God. Are you talking about your ministry that same way, though? It's, it's the way you put the words together. It's the way, oh, man. And see, especially people who knew you, who knew you, uh, your former life, you know, before Christ, B.C. Yeah, yeah, when they can see the change in your life and they want to know, what, what's got you this way? What, what? And you said, look, man, it's, look, man, New Life Worship Center, it's, oh, man. That word comes, it's the way that jelly is on that biscuit, and it's piping hot. Oh, man, it's like Pastor Regina pulls them fresh out the oven, and I mean, it's tailor-made for you. I mean, it's, and that thing holds you through the week. Good God. And, I, and sometimes I, I, I look back at my notes, and I peel off the foil off my notes, and I, I reheat them, and, I, and, I, and I, I read over them again and again. I mean, it, you know, it's leftovers, but it's still good on Monday. It's still good on Tuesday. It's still good on Wednesday. Th oh, man. And then I'm just waiting for Sunday again. And matter of fact, I want to bring somebody with me. Kingdom franchise. Kingdom franchise. Our testimony, and what we share, that's what has people wanting to, to come and Come and hear this word that, that changed your life. We're, we are to be like Jesus. That same water that causes us to not thirst again, we got to offer that too. It's got to be on our menu. Yeah. That food that people know nothing about, we got to tell them about it. Amen? Yeah. And here's another thing I want to get into while I have a little bit of time. McDonald's on Peach Orchard Road is not concerned about the McDonald's on Tobacco Road. 
They're not trying to shut Tobacco Road's location down. Mm -mm. If anything, they may have a friendly thing to say, look, we're going to see if we can do uh, today. Let's see if we can make 25000 What y'all going to make? You know, that may be something between the owners. I don't know. Maybe they don't do that. But there are some people who are just strictly on Peach Orchard Road. They're going to come on Peach Orchard Road. They're going to go to that McDonald's. Why? Because it's closer to them. Or it may be something about that one they like. They're not going to drive all the way down Peach Orchard and make that right on Tobacco Road and go down to that McDonald's. They're not. It's out of the way. And so people want to ask me, well, why would y'all want to be on the west side? Well, listen, there's some people on the west side of town. There's some people who came in due to cybersecurity. And look, they were looking for a church just like New Life on the south side, but they're not going to drive down to Deansbridge Road. They're, not gonna, they're just not going to do it. They're going to pass so many other churches on the way. And I don't get mad at the number of churches. There's liquor stores all over the place. So if they're multiplying, why can't we? I just want us to be effective. It's no competition. And so that's another thing with franchises. We don't, and you know, it used to bother me when people would say, there's no church. Like this church, nowhere near this church. And what I, under, what I had to understand was um, I grew up in this ministry, right? So I, I have a different perspective than someone who just comes to visit New Life and has joined up with New Life because maybe they have been other places. They have been, you know, they were playing in other places and they uprooted themselves because they weren't being fed or whatever. See, this is all I know. That's all I know. And so, you know, sometimes when I hit it, I'm like, because it sounds like competition. But then I think about it. There's a certain restaurant I'll go to, and I might pass another one just like it. But I know this one that I'm on my way to. And so there's no restaurant like this restaurant. Nowhere near this restaurant. So keep on saying that. Keep on saying that and share that with your, with your neighbors and with your friends. I have no problem with it. Amen? It's franchising. If you want to all be patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, and onions on a sesame seed bun, you're not going to go in Wendy's looking for that. I'm sorry, y'all. That's just the way God gave me this message. It's lighthearted, but there's, there's revelation in it. If you if you want, listen, if you want an individual dark dinner with fries and slaw with a large sweet tea, there's only one place where you can order it that way. You got you to gotta go to Broad Street, Maryland's Fried Chicken. <laughs> you do. You do. Getting back on that topic of Peach Orchard Road is not worried about tobacco. Peach Orchard Road, McDonald's is not worried about the McDonald's. In Grove Town, there was a time when the disciples, they found out somebody was casting out demons in Jesus' name. Go to Luke. It's over in Luke. I believe it's Luke 9. And um, it was John. John said, Master, we heard somebody casting out a demon in your name. And Jesus was like, look, if they're for us, they're with us. They're not against us. <laughs> Let them. And see, so, you know, the disciples, I'm, I have another, this may have to be a Tuesday session, but I just believe, you know, you, you, got to, you got to have a successor. You got Elijah, had Elisha, you know, Peter probably reluctantly passed it on to Paul, but he did. You got, you got to have other people. You got to have, you got to have, that's the, that's the true mark of a successful uh, uh, whatever you can duplicate yourself. And see, and, and release people to do the work. Release people to do the work. And that's one thing I know that used to plague a lot of people. A lot of people want to feel like they have dibs, you know, on a particular position in church or ministry in church. And we got to grow. Whatever you're doing now, 10 years from now, you may not be doing that same thing. People that are on the praise team now and the choir now, 10, 15 years from now, you're probably not going to still be singing. Some of these kids that are in our kingdom kids that are in our, our temple teens, they are going to be doing that. They're going to take over. They're going to they're going to they're going to be taking up offering. Budget and finance is going to change. You know, you may still be alive, but you don't want to still be taking off your coat and back there counting after church 10, 15 minutes. You're not going to want to feel like doing that at a certain age. 
I'm, I'm going to need you to do this, okay? I've, I've, I've done this. Church is over. I'm out. Peace. We're going to eat or we done cook something. Hallelujah anyhow. Never let your burdens get you down. It's your turn to count after church now. It's your turn to stay a little while and lock up the building. It's your turn to open up the building. So we need some people, willing workers, willing workers, that grab a hold to the, to the word of the Lord and decide, I'm going to rep the franchise in my neck of the woods. I'm going to hold it down for you, Jesus. I might not be Jesus, but he's in me. I said, I might not be Jesus, but he's in me. And so the same power, the same authority that he was able to cast out demons, I can do it too. If you're in need of healing in your body, pull up, pull up, pull up on me. I can tell you what he did for me. I can, I can tell you of his healing power and I can pray you through it. You don't have to drive to another, another restaurant. Pull up, pull up. What, what, was, what you felt at church? Come, come holler at me. Talk to me. Come on, bro. You ain't got to go through this by yourself. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. And when God does it for you, testify. When God does it for you, don't be ashamed to give him praise. When God does it for you, lift your hands. Open your mouth. Bless his name because it could have been another way. Yeah. Yeah, they do it in restaurants all the time. They tell you, tell somebody about it. Sometimes they're just open. They give, you, they give you literature. They give you little things. Put this on your social media. Take a picture in front of our building, in front of our sign. Hashtag this. Everybody's doing it. Do it for the Lord. Do it for the Lord. Do it for the Lord. If he's done something for you, tell somebody he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement, my peace was upon him. And, and with his stripes... With his stripes, come over here where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. Mm. What's in one store, it goes in all the others. I, I said earlier, sometimes there's regional differences, but for the most part, generally, what is in one, you'll find in the other. Sometimes this person's shake machine is down. They need to work that out with God. Sometimes you need to rest. You need to rest in God. So that way your inner staff won't be under man. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because, you know, that's been a problem in the pandemic. They can't find people to work. Can't find people to work. Unemployment is paying people more than some of these places. I pull up some of these places. They have a sign that says, now looking for this, now looking for this, now looking for this. I was like, wow. I'm off on Mondays. <laughs> Good God. People, how do you leave people? I'm getting ready to close. How, how do you leave people when they leave your presence? Do they feel welcome? Some people are, well, they feel welcome in the parking lot. Brother Antonio and DJ and them, they make people feel welcome. Brother Will, they make people feel welcome. Then you're greeted at the door. Sister Nile and some of our other ushers here, they make people feel welcomed. They enjoy the praise and worship. There's something about corporate. Yes, you can have this at home, but there's something about corporate. If there wasn't anything to corporate praise and worship, then there would have been no need for the spirit to come in like a mighty Russian wind on the day of Pentecost when they were all on one accord. Yes. I just wanted you to think today. I just really wanted you to think today. That was the purpose of today's message. How do you leave people feeling after they've talked to you? You don't want to be religious like the Pharisees. Jesus warned them in Matthew 23, uh, in the 25th verse, he said, What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside it's still filthy, full of greed, self-indulgence. What's on the inside of you? Amen. Stand to your feet. We're getting ready to get out of here. Hallelujah. The kingdom franchise. We got to rep the kingdom franchise. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for these that are in this room today, God. Thank you, Lord, that maybe someone was challenged today in their thinking to truly live what they are displaying. Maybe this message would encourage someone to begin to post more about their church and not be ashamed to tell of the goodness of Jesus and what you've done for them. 
in their lives. God, I thank you for these people that stand before me. I love each and every one of them. Bless their families and households now. In Jesus' name, go in peace.